We've been delighted to be working with the Dumfries Archival Mapping Project. This organisation has been hunting out pre-ordnance survey estate maps uh, and sort of land management maps. Not only is this a vital part of our heritage, looking at how the landscape has changed, how this was recorded on different maps, but also exploring the art of map making. And what I love is that these were commissioned on a private basis and they were always commissioned for a particular reason. It's as interesting to see what's on the maps as it is to actually think about what were the maps trying to show the owners. We're talking about maps that have probably uh, as good as or better accuracy than the first ordnance survey. If you compare them to satellite images, we have some that were done in the 1760s uh, that were within in a 4,000 acre estate, um, the boundary being out by five meters. We're not talking about uh, somebody who's just sketching on a piece of paper, we're talking about something that's um, proper and real and that you can geo-reference and you can understand in relation to maps today and it is a valid document as far as history is concerned. The great thing that the Dumfries Archival Mapping Project does is it actually gets these maps and digitises them and puts them online. National Library for Scotland has got the most amazing mapping facility. It allows you to actually zoom in and you can actually transpose on these uh, uh, historic maps. It shows you how the landscape has changed, it shows you different uses for the landscape and a lot of the different angles of how we see landscape and how it's changed over time. One of the most stark things you see with these maps is how different the landscape was only a couple of hundred years ago. And the work of the Dumfries Archival Mapping Project means that we now have a better resource here in Dumfries and Galloway than anywhere else in Europe. Absolutely astonishing the amount of detail and the number of maps that the Dumfries Archival Mapping Project has been able to find. Well, we've been running around looking for maps and we've found quite a lot, um, mainly up in Falkirk, believe it or not because that's where the Forbes estate records are. A absolutely anybody is very welcome to come along because uh, part of the damp remit is not just in copying the maps but also in uh, promoting them so that other people can enjoy them as well. The nice thing about a map is, is that whoever it is that goes and looks at the map will find something specific that they enjoy about the map. And uh, everybody looks at maps with different eyes. What's been particularly exciting is working with Archie and the team on a range of events through the life of the Galloway Lens Scheme. And we've done a project looking at the geology of the area, and we've also done a project looking at how the landscape has inspired literary heroes that have cited Galloway in their work. And then also looking at other topics like, what can the maps tell us about birdsong 200 years ago? What would the Galloway Lens have sounded like 200 years ago? And what we've really enjoyed as well is how the mapping project has linked to other projects in the suite of the Galloway Lens Scheme because we've got a, the Place Names Project working with the University of Glasgow um, has been exploring where do place names come from and how, what can place names tell us about our historic landscape. And obviously the maps are an absolutely vital source in this because it allows us to compare the changes in names through different maps as time passes. These old maps that Archie's been collecting and scanning in beautiful high resolution colour, A, they're very beautiful to look at, um, but in many cases they give us the, or some cases at least, they give us the earliest known form of the name that we're looking at. And also sometimes they give us names that, we, that have disappeared since then, um, since the map was made. So we have various lost names. What we have in these older maps, the pre ordnance survey ones, is a record of what the landscape was like that's probably more detailed than the ordnance survey themselves. It's the historical evidence really that we're after because they show all sorts of things from what the agriculture was like, who was living where, a um, whole realm of uh, different ways of looking at life almost uh, compared to what the modern maps are. The legacy of this project, with all the maps uploaded to the National Library of Scotland, really is such a strong legacy of the work that we've done because these will now be available for future generations, for people wherever you are, you can access these historic maps. And so this has really brought to life something that has often been hidden away in drawers or in back offices and things. These estate maps are very specific maps. And my absolute thanks go to Archie and his team at Dumfries Archival Mapping Project all the other partners involved and particularly the owners of the maps in question as well because it's been brilliant that they've let these be copied and opened out uh, for open viewing.